SS Werewolves. A widespread resistance of Germany as they would never surrender was originally the idea of SS officer Reinhard Heydrich, a top official who was a main architect to starting the final solution and its mass killing plans. However, he would be assassinated in 1943 by Czech resistance and the idea would be put on hold. In the fall of 1944, the leader of the SS, known as Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler, would develop the commando force, the SS Werewolves. At this time, the Allied forces were advancing from the east and west. Werewolves were recruited from the SS volunteers and teenagers from the Hitler Youth. This could be observed as Nazi leadership grasping for straws as Hitler would be opposed to the idea of German women fighting in the war. With that said, indoctrinated Hitler youth females would make up some of the werewolf division during the war. Werewolves would carry out some successful operations including an assassination mission. Werewolves on paper looked like a very effective strategy and a strong unit. Werewolves were to be dropped in behind enemy lines to sneak up on allies who would be preoccupied facing the German Wehrmacht in the front. Werewolves were expected to be stealth and strategic. Werewolves would be equipped additionally with fireproof coats and silenced Walther pistols. Unfortunately for them though, the current Wehrmacht and other SS units would not spare what ammunition and equipment they currently held since they faced the enemy directly, leaving werewolves with less than what they were originally planned for. The secret location for werewolf training would be conducted at an older castle on the Rhine. Here they would be taught guerrilla warfare, evade and capture, demolition techniques, and improvising household items into explosives. Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler appointed Hans Adolf Prutzmann to the command of these werewolves, a diehard SS officer who is an expert in partisan warfare after fighting insurgents in German-occupied Ukraine for three years. Franz Oppenhoff was a German lawyer and an Allied appointed mayor in the city of Aachen in Germany. He was the first German mayor under American rule and he was sworn into office October 31st, 1944 without press release to evade attention from any Nazi relatives and Nazi affiliates. However, Operation Carnival was ordered by Heinrich Himmler as he became aware of Oppenhoff's position. A werewolf operation consisting of four SS men and two Hitler youth. The unit was parachuted into a Belgian forest nearby on March 20th, 1945 with the plans of assassinating the new mayor. After landing, they moved forward and killed a 20-year-old Dutch guard at the frontier and set up camp. Ilse Hirsch, a Hitler Youth werewolf in the unit, was separated and continued her way to Aachen to fulfill her objective as the city guide. She made contact with a friend once she arrived and discovered Franz Oppenhoff's location. The rest of the werewolf unit arrived on the 25th of March in Aachen. Two of them knocked on Oppenhoff's door pretending to be lost German pilots. Oppenhoff opened his door and would talk with them at the doorstep as he attempted to persuade what he assumed to be lost pilots to surrender. In retaliation, one would hesitate and the other shouted Heil Hitler and shot Oppenhoff in the head. Three of them now, including Hirsch, who was waiting on the side, now began their escape together. While on the run, Hirsch caught her foot on a tripwire and triggered a landmine that exploded, gravely injuring her and killing fellow escapee named Letty Geb, the one responsible for directly assassinating Oppenhoff. This assassination would be the werewolf's biggest accomplishment as it was completed behind enemy lines, and that it would make for good use in propaganda. More assassinations would take place and Nazis would claim some as werewolf agents doing, although it's speculation whether some of these events are credible or if it was just used for propaganda. With the war coming closer to an end, on April 1st, 1945, Joseph Goebbels would give a speech over the propaganda station Radio Werewolf. This broadcast was to reach residential citizens to boost civilian morale and German resistance. The transmission would start by the sound of a wolf's howl and a speech encouraging German morale to fight with cloak and dagger techniques. The message's purpose was to kill allies in the area when their guard was down, to never give up, and to prolong the war. The goal was not only to empower German resistance, but to also instill fear into allied soldiers when occupying cities and villages. 
However, the war was coming to an end, and werewolf operations were not buffing a wide-scale civilian backlash as fanatical Nazis had hoped. High-ranking Nazis that were left alive after Hitler's death, like SS Oberstabenfuhrer Otto Skorenzi, would make use of the werewolves by converting their operations to rat lines for evacuating war criminals and other Nazis attempting to avoid capture. After the war, there has been no evidence of Allied casualties as a result of werewolf operations. Historians argue that they never were a serious threat as they were too undertrained, not well equipped, transferred frequently, poorly organized, and poorly led. A big fear expressed by American allies was post-war guerrilla warfare dragging the war on. However, this didn't materialize and the effort of the denazification initiative would begin. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for listening. Also, please leave a comment below for conversation. I enjoy talking to you all. Thank you again, and until next time, take care.